tonight. Uh, a very, very special first two hours. Special for me, special for you, and I hope special for my, my friend of at least 20 years on the radio. He is literally a legend in his own time. Uh, Jordan Maxwell has been responsible for probably starting the careers of God knows how many people, 20, 50, that you know the names of, people who have borrowed, I'm being charitable, let's just be honest, who have stolen the magnificent research and work, uh, insights, observations, realities that have been uncovered and discovered by Jordan Maxwell. Uh, he's been at it over, I think, over 55 years now. He started when he was three years old. Uh, is that right, Jordan? I was 55 years, but I was a little bit older than three, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you... I was 59. I was back in 1959. I started and got interested in the subjects of the dark world we live in. 59, but making it about well, 55 years, yeah. You know, that's the same year that Errol Flynn died and Mario Lanza died. It was the end of the 50s and uh, a very auspicious platform for you, uh, the young Jordan Maxwell, to step off of into this truly dark world. It is dark. It's dark, dangerous, dirty, and deadly. Oh, no doubt about that, boy. I think every day we've seen that crammed down your throat. So. <clears throat> but unlike other times in the past, we're now in serious trouble. Uh, you know, we, we had somewhat of a chance to learn and to do something a long time ago, but it's, uh, it's, it's way too late. I mean, the whole world, not just America, it's the whole entire globe, the whole entire world is in trouble because the whole concept, the very uh, bottom line concept of government, law, Commerce, all that kind of thing. It's all totally destruct destructive. It's all ludicrous. It's all uh, oh, it's imploding. Corrupted. It's falling apart. It's uh, falling apart. No it's doubt about rotted it. to its core, and it it really doesn't stand up to the to the symbol it used to represent. It, it, even even an average person watching this this horror show called Hillary Clinton is figuring it out that there's something wrong with government, there's something wrong with the way our country is administered. Uh, it is not of, by, and for the people at all. It is of, by, and for the 1%. And they don't give a, a, a good tinker's damn about us, whether we live or die. They kill people all the time. You saw about Josh Rich, who was murdered a couple of weeks, three weeks ago. He is now uh, being named uh, in a roundabout way by Julian Assange as the man directly behind the DNC email leaks that WikiLeaks uh, distributed to the world and caused uh, some very welcome insight into the Democratic National Committee. So Josh was murdered, shot twice in the back of the head by some accounts, shot in the back and in the head. At any rate, he was walking home at 4 a.m., and they were just waiting. They got him. When your time is up, especially on the Clinton death list, your time is up. And they've got close to 100 people on that list now. I'm not saying the Clintons kill people, but I'm saying it's the Clinton death list. These are people who had things to do directly, indirectly, directly or tangentially with the Clinton machine, and they paid the price. Well, what about John Kennedy, when the assassination of Kennedy? Absolutely. Was 30, Absolutely. 130 or something people died all around him? Yeah, they killed virtually everyone. That yeah, was involved or had anything to say. There are a few hangers on, but not many left. You know, the, this thing about Julian Assange, as most of you know, he is still stuck uh, being held essentially a prisoner, not by, but at the, at the mercy of the Ecuadorian embassy. Uh, he's hiding out from prosecution for alleged rape in Sweden. Uh, he's been in there for three, four years now. Uh, some, uh, democratic pundit who is also a CNN host is calling for the assassination of Julian Assange today <laughs> he's, he's on uh, this guy's on CNN uh, you can't believe what's happening folks if you've been away or off planet for a while it ain't the same place as it used to be 
No, no, it certainly isn't. I, I remember when I was a little kid when we first got our first uh, black and white TV. This was back, I don't know, maybe in 53 or something like that. Um, and I remember sitting with my family in the front room and, and just wondering at this wonderful uh, technology, television. And uh, Chet Huntley was the... Uh, <clears throat> Brinkley the and Huntley. Yeah, Brinkley and Huntley. Well, Huntley was the NBC, uh, uh, you know. He's a news anchor. He and the, the news anchor, right, yeah. the news anchor, Chad Huntley. And I remember distinctly him saying, tonight there are certain people in our country. Certain people what? Did we lose Jordan? All right, well, we'll, we'll get him back. That's the problem with Skype. Sometimes it sounds wonderful. Sometimes it sounds awful, and sometimes it doesn't sound at all. We'll uh, we'll recover Jordan in just a minute. I'm gonna look. Let me look for this story. Here it is. This is really uh, disgusting. When we talk about people on the Clinton death list and other people who have been murdered for what for what they know uh, or what they've done or what they've threatened to do. Now, here we have, and if, if nothing else, the Democrat Party has been exposed to all of you, to the world, as being the lying, rotten entity of, of darkness. We talked about that earlier already with Jordan. Uh, it is, it is the, uh, it's the bad guy. And they've always pointed to the Republicans and painted themselves into this beautiful corner of gossamer white light there some kind of an angelic presence in the political arena. No. Democratic strategist calls for the assassination of Julian Assange. It's true. Uh, Amid the media-hyped furor, this is from uh, Zero Hedge, over Donald Trump's Second Amendment comments and WikiLeaks suggestions about the untimely death, how about murder, of Seth Rich, uh, we thought... It perhaps of note, the Democratic strategist and CNN host named Bob Beckel, B-E-C-K-E-L, has called for the, this is a quote now, I'm going to read it, got some bad words in it, called for the illegal assassination of that son of a bitch, Julian Assange. Now, this is not... Not the American way. Not supposed to be. Didn't used to be. It's not supposed to be the Democrat way. But I'm telling you, people are dying. The Democrat list alone. And now the Clinton death list has picked up, I think, five people in the last six weeks. These are people, again, involved with, somehow connected to the Clintons. So Mr. Beckel has stepped across the line. In fact, he's fallen across the line. Now, we have more on Hillary's medical condition, her health condition. I am quoting the story as an allegation, allegedly. Uh, An ex-employee of Hillary's physician has gone public and said, yes, it is true, she has been diagnosed with Dementia. Now, right there, what do we have? We really should have the end of her, her candidacy. That's it. That's, that's the end. I hope the Republican Party, the RNC, files a lawsuit in federal court insisting that this woman be either examined by an independent panel of psychiatrists and medical doctors or that her health records be subpoenaed from her own doctor. If she has dementia, she's out. We cannot, will not, and should not even contemplate having someone in the Oval Office in the White House with dementia. You know that. All right? Dementia is not the only thing. We have also clear evidence of some kind of seizure activity, which was also in those alleged medical records that we had posted linked to 
uh, that were on Superstation 95. Everybody linked to them. It was some kind of uh, serious stress-oriented issue which involved seizures. We have dementia. We have obvious issues of balance. Hillary can't climb stairs. She has to be helped. That black guy who has been described as her handler is now identified as a doctor. I can't give you his name, but I came across that today. Also remember her cough. Hillary Clinton has had a cough for for going back to 2012 or before that. Uh, this is a serious cough. It's not a joke. It doesn't go away with a drink of water. Here, listen. Yes. Well, you know what? I won't hold you on here uh, any longer because you. Uh, you probably could use some water Sorry. there. Uh, Hillary Clinton, live from uh, New York. <coughs> this is another oh, one. Way too much. <coughs> Hillary always seems to have a glass of water nearby to help allay the coughing, but it doesn't seem to work. <coughs> this is 2012. This is 2015. <coughs> so you got a span of three years there with the, the same. Okay, I'm back. Don't All worry. right. You get to hear Hillary cough for a minute here. <coughs> okay. Often Hillary Clinton will... That's October uh, 22nd, uh, 2015. I was just going through her, her health issues, Jordan, and... This really ties into what we were talking about because we are supposedly a people governed uh, by those who represent our wishes, of, by, and for the people. That, as we mentioned when you dropped out, is gone. Uh, it's an illusion. It's a myth. It has been a myth since the death of John Kennedy. That was the, the coup d'etat that ended uh, all real liberty in this country. Uh, we have now... Uh, Cabals. We have the Bush, Clinton, Cabal. Uh, the CIA is involved with all of it. Uh, make no mistake about that. I mentioned also while you were off for a couple of minutes the Clinton death list. We were talking about that. With You mentioned John Kennedy's as well over 100 people, 130 I think, uh, and counting. Some very, very important and very bright people uh, have been removed. Uh, Hillary Clinton is a fraud. Uh, she ran the Clinton White House for eight years. Bill refers to her as the warden. He will take... N n he doesn't challenge her at all. That guy will take anything she throws at him, including a fist. You saw the black eye he had once. Remember that, Jordan? Yeah, sure do. He does, yeah. too. Yeah, oh, of course he does. So he's just, he's just playing. Uh, she's the power... She is now being held together by a delicate balance, a mixture of pharmaceuticals and lies on behalf of her, her campaign. Uh, her doctor, of course, is legally bound not to discuss or disclose. But when you, when you add up all these things that she has, and I, I mentioned while you were gone, a former employee of the doctor, Jordan, has come forward out of uh, concern for the welfare and security of, of the United States and its people and confirmed that she has dementia. That is running around now. There's a, a YouTube video of it. Uh, is it post-concussion syndrome that causes dementia? It's doubtful. That's the kind of thing that is, I don't want to call it genetic, but it, it just begins. It may have caused her to fall. It may have been causing her balance issues. We have dementia. We have the concussion. We have the blood clot. We have seizures, perhaps TIAs. We have issues of balance. You heard the coughing. And that's just a few of the videos of the coughing. She also has DVT, deep vein thrombosis. She's had two clots in her legs. She clots. 2009 and 2012, uh, I think, or 2000, yeah, I think it was 2009, 2012. Uh, she's been treated for thyroid uh, issues, which can be major since the 1950s. Uh, her health is a catastrophe, 
and probably worse than those items I listed. We don't know. But it's our business to find out, and whatever we have to do to force this issue legally, we have to do. And I don't want to see the country hung up in the courts forever. I don't like the court system. It does work, but this woman needs to come forward as a matter of honor and disclose her health, or she needs to be held accountable for the truth. And with that, I will stop. Well, you know, yeah, but everybody who's aware of what's going on pretty well knows what, what's, what the story is, but she's being protected. And myself, I don't, you know, uh, for myself, I don't really care anymore because I, I know that the, the situation is so critically far gone that there's so many other things that are even more important to me at the moment. So I just sit by and quietly and watch what uh, George Carlin says is a it's a big club and you ain't in it. So Oh, uh, I wish well, <laughs> you know, we lose these brilliant minds. We lost yeah, George Carlin. We need George Carlin more now than ever. <laughs> uh seriously. Uh yeah. the, the, the the Sherman Skolnick, the great journalist from Chicago, we lost him. Oh yeah. Right when oh, Obama yeah. was coming in uh and being installed. We we lost Sherman. Uh, these are really heroic people, and I just for fun, I wish we still had Red Fox. Uh, oh yeah, he was great. Just I a know. great comic. We have the first time. You know, I got to the point where you you are and have been before I was that it's too late. Uh, and the first time you and I talked about that that concept, it was too early to to say on the air. It was 15 years ago, probably, uh, that we began to mention just in private conversations that it was, it's over. It's done. We could see where it was going. You, you more than I. Uh, and it's, it's gone there. No doubt about it. It's, it's pretty much overwhelming and obvious now to people who are waking up and, uh, and, and I have people telling me that all the time. You know, you know, Around the world, people are waking up, and I say yes. Oh. That's what prisoners do when they're in San Quentin. They uh, they wake up. It doesn't mean anything because you're still in prison, but at least you're waking up to it finally. And so, uh, you know, you should have woke up a uh, hundred years ago. Should have woke up a long time ago. But uh, you know, when the masses are going to wake up, Jordan, when they're going up the final ramp, and they hear. <laughs> the screams of the dying, and smell the smell of death. That's when yeah. they'll wake up. It will finally, <laughs> finally occur to them there may be something wrong here. Yeah, and so... I don't mean to be so graphic, but that's the way it seems Well, but that's me. exactly what's happening, in point of fact. That's happening around the world. People are losing their lives. There's a lot of bloodshed going on because of government religion. It's all very, very corrupt. And people know that. Most you know, what's everybody the, knows it now. What's the real difference, Jordan, between government and religion? Now, I don't mean that the, the simple details. They're both engines of mass social control, manipulation. So, really, they're just the same monstrosity in two different costumes. That's exactly what it is. It's it's just the you know the, I always say you, the eagle only has two wings. Um, birds only have two wings: left wing and a right wing. That's why you have left and right right wing politics. And you only got two arms and two legs. So you know, it's always been understood that government merely well even in the original. If you go back far enough into ancient history. The kings always represented not only the political power uh, to kill and to take life, but he also represented God. You don't think so? Mess with him and find out. And so uh, that's the way it still is today. Um, the, the governments represent God, and they like to play like they're God, like they're Caesar, the emperor of the world. And so we still have the same stuff, different day, the same crap, and... America was supposed to be something uh, different, you know, where people uh, were considered to be important, but no longer. That, that's gone, too. 
So no, we, no, yeah, not we, at all. We've lost, uh, we've lost everything. We've lost it. Now, for those of you listening who don't want to go there and don't want to subscribe to what uh, what we're talking about now that it is too late, that's fine. And maybe we'll be proven wrong. But the facts of the matter are pretty irrefutable. Uh, the controllers control so well now, so thoroughly. Go back to read, go read Operation Northwoods. Just go read it and, and what they were doing in the, in the 1950s to control this country. The CIA was bragging back then that they could put any story they wanted in any newspaper within an hour in the, in the U.S. That was, that was 65 years ago. Where are they now? It's instant. They are the media. That's where they are now. Don't forget that. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to help your friends wake up. It doesn't mean we shouldn't reach for reality and try to wake up. It doesn't mean we should quit. No. Uh, it means we should educate as many as possible. So maybe after the conflagration, there'll be some good people around who who knew and who remember what we're talking about right now and how, if we ever have the chance to avoid this again, we'll have a better opportunity to do so. Yeah. Well, I've always said that the American people have no power. And that applies to the whole world. The whole world has no power, but especially America, you know, being talked about as the most powerful country in the world, the American people have no power. That's spelled N-O, zero, no power to do anything. They can elect, but they cannot select. You can only elect who you're given. You cannot select anything. So, uh, But we have no power because knowledge is power. 